going off topic. Off topic? You really off topic right now. Yo, you way off topic? How is it that everybody's over here and you way over there off topic? All right, what's up, y'all? Uh, welcome to another edition of Going Off Topic. Uh, my name is Brother Omowale. As you know, you are currently on Omowale Africa YouTube channel. We are one channel, four streams of content. So, you know, we got Going Off Topic. We have Race, Manhood, and Power, Omowale After Dark, and then Office Hours with Professor Omowale. Uh, Going Off Topic is our flagship brand for the channel. And I keep telling y'all, we are building the plane while, while we're flying, right? So, this thing started off as like a panel discussion, right? A black family panel discussion. Uh, it somewhat morphed into an interview. Uh, and then we started having panels again. We had game nights. Um, but I'm really, the whole gist of this, uh, we want to highlight black content creators from across the genre of, of content creation, right? So I don't care what type of content it is. It can be art. It can be music. Uh, it can be your social media posts, right? If you are posting, if you are creating, uh, if you are a black person who is building an audience, we want to hear from you. Um, and from my perspective, you know, I don't want to be pigeonholed as like, you know, the conscious guy or the hotep guy. So going off topic for me is an opportunity to engage in conversations or engage in discussions with folks who you might think that I would not speak to. Right. Listen, I am a regular degla dude. I enjoy regular shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I enjoy regular music. I enjoy regular food. Yes, I read a lot. Yes, I'm concerned about liberation, but this is an opportunity for 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 me to show you all a different side and also introduce you all to some dope people who who I have come across um, either on social media um, and or through music. Um, so today I'm going to be doing my first artist spotlight. If you ever show up for the Race, Manhood and Power podcast, you know, I'm really big on the music, um, highlighting a lot of underground artists that I rock with heavy um, and my own personal network. I have a lot of artist friends, right? So I try to, you know, just highlight and big them up and support them in any way that I can. Um, so I want to share my screen really quick because I have a dope artist who we're going to be highlighting. Her name is Reese Raps. She's out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, and I came across this sister because after I did my, I guess that was like episode 12 of the Race, Manhood, and Power podcast on uh, Black women have been infected with horrible culture, someone sent me a post that she had posted up on social media that was along the same lines of what I was saying. And I read it. Um, I had my producer reach out, to, reach out to her. And, you know, we have her here in Convo today. But I just want to show you all her IG page just really quick so y'all can see the vibes. Y'all can see what I'm talking about because this is really a super dope and a super versatile artist. So this is her, her IG page. It is IG Reese raps. Um, Y'all know my wife. Her name is Reese, right? That's my nickname for my wife. Her name is Reese. So I already like Reese. She already got a plus one because her nickname is literally the same nickname as my wife's, right? So shout out to you. I already like you. I'm already digging the energy. I want to play just a, a two quick tracks so y'all can see her. And then we're going to bring her on screen and have a good combo. Ready? All right, check this out. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You say you're looking for a bite. Bye. Baby, that's a dapper bite. Bye. You say you look a group. But I know how to catch you in the mood. I know how to catch you in the mood now. Bye, bye, baby, that's what that provide. Bye, you say you looking for a groove. But I know how to catch you in the mood. I know how to catch you in the mood now. I am the future. Hey. I be out here sipping kombucha. In the launch here, not with all right hold on hold on this yeah, other joint because listen i told you sis is versatile so she got you mean she got the vocals the vocals is there but she also got the bars so listen check this shit out real quick hold on lyrical master this is a rapture i won't get no happily ever after psycho schizo flip scripts in the chapters white folks had them whips they call them crackers no child left behind even the slackers read it backwards we got x because we the factor what do it matter when you ask they say you badger like batter batter base first never the latter was looking for the missing piece only to find there is no puzzle that could muzzle all the demons in my mind one day i dreamed the lamborghini sold the diamonds and i seen it with the shock 
to the fact that people dying out. Eliminate the hate and see who stick around. I made mistakes by playing with the snakes. I had to weed them out. And the bait and hope to change the fate. For those who can't speak, the playing cards were working hard. You can obtain the things you seek. We race it to a peak, so what's the point of rushing? World sick, no cure with a robot tussing. World wind, mind blown, but they ain't told us nothing. Cyclone, cyclone, cause my flow abundant. Yeah, they quit to call me Katrina, but think I'm playing games cause I want to get paid for a feature. No, I'm not saying. Sheesh. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me let me bring my sis up onto the screen. <laughs> Reese Rap. What's up? What's up? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm listen. I'm over here vibing out to to some dope ass music. Hey, I appreciate you for real. I appreciate being on here. I appreciate being able to you know speak more. It's crazy how you know you just say stuff and then other opportunities come out. So. Everything it's, happens for a reason. It's all love. Listen, uh, listen, sis, you are uh, blowing up. So anything I can do to to put some 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 fuel, right? Pour some gas on your flames. <laughs> I'm happy um, to to do that. So just do me do me a quick favor. Just go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience, and then we're just gonna go go back and forth for a few questions, and then I'm gonna let you go. Okay. Out what up? What up? I go by Reese Rats. Y'all can find my music, everything at Reese Rats, R double E C double E Rats on all major platforms, Reese Rats.com. I'm a hip hop artist. I, I do a little bit of singing, a little talk singing, but you know, I, I make vibe music. I make real music. I make music true to myself. Uh, and I make music that doesn't harm anybody. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I just make different music and i'm in my own lane so i'm very proud of that that's dope um tell me a little bit about pro vibes where where the inspiration come for that so with pro vibe it was really just something to where i didn't overthink it you know because i find myself overthinking a lot of things sometimes and overthinking lyrics but pro vibe i just let the melodies kind of come come with it and really like when you listen to the verses it's, it's more i'm more talking about you know just doing my own thing, you know, vibing and doing my own thing. But the, even calling it pro vibe is because I provide vibes. Therefore, I am pro vibe. Therefore, I am for the vibe. And you can be pro vibe too. But yeah. it was just a song that you could just vibe out to, chill to. It makes me feel good. Like I could be in a, like a bad mood and I'll play pro vibe and I'll just like vibe out and I'll it'll, it'll neutralize any type of <laughs> any type of feeling I'll have. So it, it's a definitely like a neutral song where you could just chill and vibe but i got all different types of music so that was just something that showed people that i can do that too you know i can do that too. it doesn't have to be always so rapidly rap because a lot of my stuff was really fast rap you know before that and very heavy on the rap part but pro vibe is just showing that my versatility and i can you know slow it down chill out too Nice, nice. Listen, I've been vibing out to that track all morning. I played it for my <laughs> wife, Reese, right? I played it for her, and she's been digging the energy. So um, we really hey, rocking with you over here, right? It's so, that Reese vibe energy, man. <laughs> listen, all the vibes love good. that the record. Is, they, they super high over here, right? So I was doing a little bit of research, research about you just to prepare for the interview. Mm -hmm. um, I know you're originally from uh, Pittsburgh. You've been, I think, in Kentucky, California, like Kansas City, Kansas City, yeah, okay. Kansas City, um, St. Louis, California, Pittsburgh. Now I'm in Charlotte. Well, I did that all backwards, but started in Pittsburgh, moved to California for a little bit, went to high school in St. Louis, lived there for four years, lived in Kansas City for six years. And then I've been in Charlotte for almost four years. All right, you have to tell me a little bit about that journey, right? Because, like, how, how did that happen? Are like, you like a military brat? Like, what's going on? Yeah, that's the most common question I get, but no, I'm not. <laughs> so, really, um, what happened is, you know, I went from, you know, I was raised, initially, I was in the suburbs. You know, I'm the youngest of five that I grew up with. Then I have another brother I didn't grow up with. But I'm the youngest of five. I was originally in the suburbs. My dad's a computer programmer. Um, when I was in about fourth grade, my dad lost his job, um, because he wasn't as updated on his languages. He had been doing this since the eighties on his computer languages. So he, we moved from suburbs in Pittsburgh to the hood, like when I was in fourth grade. So, and I'm so grateful for that experience because it showed me like, I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I get that you could become a product in your environment. Cause I was one that you know, I, I started assimilating to like, I went from goody two shoes to start assimilating to like being in the hood and I fit in, you know, and 
it was just, I lived there from um, fourth to seventh grade in the hood of Pittsburgh. And then so when the job offer came in California, it was just that he just got it. My dad got a job offer out there, but it was like a six month to hire type thing. And he didn't get hired on. So we only lived in California for six months, but it kind of it got us out the hood in Pittsburgh and it got us out of our comfort zone because my parents are from Pittsburgh. I imagine my, I would raise my kids in Pittsburgh. It, it was just like it was home. Everybody around me was from Pittsburgh. I never even thought like that I would be living somewhere else and it just was normal so um and that definitely changed my perspective moving across the country um then he happened to find a job in st louis um lived there for four years and when the recession happened in 2011 and stuff happened the company got laid off he got laid off and he happened to find a job in kansas city but when i was in kansas city my parent i my dad's updated on his languages by then and everything so he i talked the family into moving to charlotte because I used to work for this quick trip and they were building a new division out there. I'm like, yo, Kansas City's lame. It's cold out here. Like we can move to Charlotte. It's warmer. It's closer to home. And it's just, it's closer to the beaches. It's a win-win. So my family was like, bad, okay. And they moved and then I ended up meeting my ex and I stayed behind. <laughs> so they moved here in like 2015. And it wasn't until um, I left my ex in 2018 when I moved to Charlotte and and I needed that experience because that was my being out there in the middle of the country with no family um it ended up being like an abusive relationship and stuff that that it, I did a lot of growing up in that time period in those three years you know yeah. from from I think I was I was like 19 when I got with my ex so it was, I was 19 to almost 24 in a in a relationship and it, it definitely changed my trajectory, you know, and um, even with me rapping and everything, it changed, it changed everything. So, but that's yeah. my, my long, long short story about like how no, I it's ended all, up it's, it's, all good. it's all good. Like I'm actually enjoying learning uh, more about your story, right? Because I know you had a lot of positive male influences growing up, right? Your grandfather is the one mm -hmm. who gave you the name Reese. You grew up mm -hmm. singing, right? But then you... And well, it was lip syncing, actually. Okay, okay. Lip syncing. But when you got to college, that's when you found out you had bars and started to find and find find your voice. Like, tell me a little yes. bit about about that coming into the, coming into knowing that you had bars and that you wanted to be a rapper. So, what's crazy is that my mom raps. You know, my mom. So I always love music. You know, music has always been a big part. But and I did. I uh, used to write poetry and stuff like that, but I was never like, I remember trying to write raps or trying to write songs and it just wouldn't be there. So when I was in college, we used to, um, we used to underage drink and freestyle and stuff and start freestyling and stuff like that. So when I was like, yo, my freestyles kind of be hard sometimes. I'm like, I might actually start writing it down. I was in a class, I don't remember the rap, but I had, I had wrote down a rap and then I start, I was maybe like 18, 19. And then I start, um, then I made my YouTube channel and I start posting my raps to like Facebook. And I was just so excited to get my raps out there. I knew my delivery wasn't all the way there, but I was just, I didn't care. I knew people was probably hating on me and talking about me and stuff, but I didn't care. I just wanted to get it out there. And it was just a, it was just fun for me. So I had made my YouTube. I was posting rap videos. And um, that's when I first started writing. It was probably about six months before I, I met my ex. And um, that's where I found my love for rapping and writing. I was just real determined to to keep writing, keep putting it out there, even though it wasn't all the way there. But um, that kind of stopped when I had met my ex. He, and it just, I had to choose. I got like the ultimatum, you know? And if anybody gives you an ultimatum, then they're not for you. If they say you can't do what you love versus or you can't do your hobbies or it's either your hobby or them like that's a that's a major red flag so i got the ultimatum and i i really chose i chose what i thought was a soulmate over this new hobby that i had and i thought it wasn't a part of me anymore like for those four years you know i would still recite my raps but i wasn't actually I'm writing a lot of new material. I was having, I had like the, the biggest case of writer's block and I just thought it was a phase and it was a hobby. But then one, once I got out that relationship, all my creativity was coming back. I, it was like, I was writing songs like crazy. 
and I started getting in the studio. And so it just all came back to sometimes you got to change the situation you're in to, to re find yourself sometimes. But that's, that's where I started rapping in college, freestyling, turned to writing, turned to uh, hiatus and back at it. All right. So my next question is this, uh, who are your biggest, I guess, artistic or musical influences, right? Because like when I put together my top five list of MCs, like Lauren Hill was always on that list. That's just for mm-hmm. me personally. And when I was listening to you, I'm like, damn, she kind of like got a little Lauren Hill vibe going mm-hmm. on with her. So like, have you heard that before? And if not, oh, like, yeah. who are your influences? Yeah, I get the most I get is Lauren Hill. And then that was when I was um, starting out a lot. I was getting a lot of Lauren Hill, but then it like transferred to where I now I'll get like more left eye than Lauren Hill. And um, my influence is though, Lauren Hill is definitely one as um, later in life, you know, especially when I was going through a lot. I definitely was listening to a lot of Lauren Hill. I listened to a lot of older music. I listened to a lot of early 2000s, 90s music. I, I love 90s uh, R&B. I grew up on a lot of that. I, Kanye West was definitely one of my first favorite rappers. Eminem, I used to learn. I used to um, rap Eminem songs like super duper fast and learn all the lyrics. And I think... Um, Eminem was really one of my first favorite rappers as well, along with Kanye. Definitely Tupac. Listened to a lot of Tupac when I was like 17. Machiavelli, I was listening to that a lot. And um, It's just different phases I'll have. I'm, I'm a type of person where I'll re-listen to certain songs of people and I'll just listen to it over and over again, you know, learn all the words and different things. But growing up, those are really my main ones. And as I got, I think more in the recent years, I really love like Anderson Pack. You know, I was definitely sleep on Anderson Pack, but I definitely want to open up for him one day. I feel like our vibes are similar, especially now that I play with live bands and stuff. It's, I just love that live band feel, that vibe. It's tiny, that's just crazy. So definitely Anderson Pack. But as far as um, influences, those are pretty much my main, main ones. I wouldn't say they're my top five but those are my main ones throughout writing and growing up and stuff okay so you are a female rapper but you're multi-talented right Mm because you also have the vocals to go with it um so i guess my question is one of the things that i i picked up from the posts that we saw on your instagram was that you are definitely big on artist responsibility Right. In terms of you don't want to do harm to your audience, especially having a lot of young girls looking up to you and watching your movement. So I guess my question becomes, could you speak a little bit about the duality in terms of like, how do you balance womanhood and sensuality? Because I know you're all about like the vibes, like the lingerie, like the things that make you feel good. So like, how do you balance that out? And like, how does that inform your music? So what's um, crazy about Pro Vibe is that that was my first time even showing that side of me. Like a lot of times I was very more like, I don't want people to view me as sexy. I don't even want to be looked at in that box. I want to be looked at just like a dude is looked at as far as music goes. My lyrics are very unisex. You know, you can change her or she or that you can interchange the words and it, it can work for a male or female. So, um, it was definitely it was it was different for me to even to even balance that. I'm I'm still in the process, and I definitely wanted to I wanted to show that without doing too much. You know, I feel like there's definitely a thin line. I probably like straddled that line a little bit with that music video, but I'm I'm in the process more of learning how to balance that. And, and I am a I am human. I am a person. You know, I do have multiple sides of me. Um, it's just, I don't, I choose not to show certain things. And I, so it's the point that you got to kind of have your morals in place and like your overall self straight and what you want to do long term. But then also at the same time, sometimes you got to play the game too, but you can't, you can't play the game too much that you get lost in it. You know? Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll, I'll pers- I'll post certain things just to, you know, play the game, but it's it's definitely difficult. It's it's a it's a difficult 
thing that, that you got to deal with, especially being a woman in hip hop. It's a, it's a blessing and a curse. You know, so you, you can it's easier to get seen, but it's harder to get heard. You know, when you're when you're a female in, in hip hop. So you really got to you really got to show that you, you can hang with the best of them. But also you got to get the eyes on you to even get an ear, you know, for every 10 eyes, you might get one ear. So it's it's crazy. It's, it's crazy how the game is set up. But I just um, be sure not to, like, lose myself through it and show sensuality without over overly exploiting myself, you know, and just. Cause it's a lot I could be doing out here. I would already be popping right now, you know. But it's like I wouldn't. I wouldn't be okay at the end of the day. Both my parents are still living. My parents are still together. I can, I'm like, yo, if I don't, if my parents, if I can't live with my parents seeing this, that I, I can't, I can't even, I can't even put it out. And that's where I kind of stand with it. You know, when we spoke behind the scenes, you talked a lot about the industry promoting one type of profile when it comes to female artists and female artistry. It's the Mm -hmm. I don't want to call out any names. Some people call it whore rap or prostitution Mm -hmm. rap or whatever it is like. But shipper rap. (laughs) <laughs> like, like, how do you feel about that? And do you feel like there is a gravitational pull for new artists to basically submit to that type of imagery in order to be successful? Yes, I do. And I feel like, um, so, yeah, I definitely feel like there is an agenda to push a certain type of rap music onto females, not only females, but males in a different way. But um I feel like it's the consumer as well. You know, it's the consumer that has to decide whether or not they're buying into something like that. Because I'm, as an artist who doesn't fit into that stereotype of female rap, like they'll say female rap only rap about their private parts. Or like, I don't like hearing stuff like that because I'm a female rapper. I've never even mentioned any private parts in any of my raps, any music I have out, any freestyle, I've never mentioned that at all. And it's a stereotype. But then at the same time, that's the same music that the the um, audience is promoting. So that's the same stuff that y'all twerking to, y'all dancing to, y'all reposting, y'all resharing. Y'all, a lot of people are not even engaging with the people that are going against the grain. And so, like, I could post a picture um, show us skin and get way more response than me posting a rap or me posting something that I'm actually doing. So it's like we have to take responsibility as the consumers to when you see somebody that sh- that is not doing what everybody else is doing to go out your way to actually promote them and share their work because we are not being supported. So, yes, there is an agenda to push that. But at the end of the day, the audience controls the narrative no matter how much we're being pushed to a certain narrative and no matter how much the water is surrounding us we are the ones that have to drink it and a lot of us are drinking the water and not drinking the smart water over here you know they drinking the the dirty water that is surrounding us so I just feel like we have to take responsibility for that as well and if we want to change the narrative we have to start supporting other artists that are doing different things because we are out here and we're, our voices are being drowned out. Hold on one second. I just had to show you some love real quick because um, you're here today because we want to highlight you and we want to support um, what you're doing. We know that you're going against the grain and we, we definitely want to commend you um, f- for those efforts. Um, so I guess the last question that I have for you before we tap out, I actually have two more questions, but You spoke a lot about you care about your audience. You don't want to cause harm. You're very big on uh, artistic responsibility. But domestic violence is something that's been a big part of your background. How does that part of your story inform your music and inform the messages in your music? So with domestic violence, like my song, it depends on what song, you know, my different songs come from different points in my life and different stages and different ways that I feel. So at the same time, I do feel like I understand a lot of people say, well, people are just telling their story. You know, you just got to tell your story, but it's a way that you have to tell your story 
in, in order to help others, you know, just telling my story. Sometimes it's enough. I have to tell my story with the with the message or, or letting you know, like with, with some type of intention to let you know. So so you could walk away learning something or or if you went through the same thing, you could relate or you could walk away with some other type of knowledge. So with domestic violence, you'll like my song Love. I wrote that song when I, well, the first verse I wrote when I first entered that relationship and it was like, but then the second verse I wrote when I exited it, but I wrote it from a standpoint of I'm setting the stage for a toxic relationship. Like now we fucks with each other heavy and it's moving pretty fast. So I ain't had the chance to ask to have the foot let off the gas. I mean, it's getting real invested day and night. We on call, but everything's more complicated when I love you's involved. Gotta give you my all, every piece and every part of me. And that's, and I, I wrote that to like show people like, it's not okay to give people your all. You have to, like, you can't pour all of yourself into somebody without pouring into yourself. You can't. And then um, I followed that song up with my song Water, um, which is something I wrote in the middle of that relationship. We're well, halfway in the middle, exiting it, and it's talking about actually leaving that situation. So it really depends on what song is where my domestic violence part will come out because that is not my entire journey, you know, yeah. though it is a part of it. So I'm not going to touch on that in every single song, but the songs that I do touch on it, you're going to leave feeling like, okay, I need to leave this situation or I need to get out of it or um, something else. I am putting out a project called The Queen of Hearts on uh, February 14th, where I'm going to have my songs about relationships on there because on my first project i really didn't touch it was more introspective it was the diary of a pothead it was more about me and my feelings and everything like that so this next project is going to be me interacting with love interests or other feelings so whether it be like empowering somebody to leave a situation or or anything like that or just a love song or just something positive it's, it's going to be anything to do with relationships on that project and it's going to come from a place, I feel like, um, because I went through that, I'm not as trusting. Like, I, I still haven't been in a relationship since then. And I think that's fine. I mean, it's been, you don't have to be in a relationship. I want people to understand that they don't have to be tied up to somebody. You got to kind of dig within yourself and take the time to be with yourself for a while. So, I mean, it's been about four years since I've been out of that relationship. But I, I'm definitely looking forward to telling all my different perspectives of of love and, and where I'm at with it right now and being true to how I feel about it. Listen, another shout out to you for that because I'm going I'm to give you some free game here as, as the OG in the conversation. Um, sometimes the best relationship to be in is a relationship with yourself, right? Because right. Sometimes you have to take the time to discover and truly know yourself, because when you reach that point of knowing, then you'll know how to value yourself. Right. And you'll never let anybody devalue you when you understand your, your worth. So that's a man, an industry, anything when you understand the diamond that you are. And I'm looking forward to actually checking out uh, Queen of Hearts. So um, tell the family what else you got coming up next, where they can find you, all that good stuff. And then we're going to go ahead and tap out. Yeah, I. I'm sorry, I wanted to touch more on the actual post that I made because I know you asked me about it like in regards to female, but I didn't, re I haven't really touched on that ahead, post was take, more take, about. Take go ahead, take okay. your time, but go ahead, go ahead and build on that because that is why I reached out to you. Right, right okay. I mean, we have, we so, have yeah. the conversation behind the scenes, but go, go ahead and uh, uh, elaborate. And then, yeah. you know, in closing, just tell folks where they can find more and what you got coming up next. Okay, all right, great. So, I made a post um, basically talking about how we are, um, we invite this culture in, like this murder culture, this overly sexualized culture. I mean, not only from a music standpoint, but television, movies, everything, com commercials, everything has to do with either violence or sex, you know? And then at the same time, in the same breath, we will feel like oh well why are we still killing each other why are we still doing this but i go out and i see i see people singing along to songs about killing black people i see people literally screaming these lyrics like it's like it's normal and i'm like that's sick to me like that's very sick to me that y'all i could watch people talk about if you ain't about the murder game 
shut up or or you gonna shoot a nigga dead in the face right now like when i go out to clubs i look in recent like these are older songs but people are singing them word for word and i, I will go out and, and literally watch that and i'll i feel like i'm in the matrix or something because i'm like is this really real right now so the post that i made was basically saying we have to take responsibility for not only artists taking responsibility for what we're creating and what we're putting out there, but also the consumers taking responsibility for what they're listening to and what they're allowing into their homes and what they're singing along to and everything like that, because people don't realize the effect that music has on you on multiple different levels. Like there's studies that show that sound um, and frequency can affect water. You know, we are made of water. And in the same way, that affects us. And I feel like there's a huge agenda to push this type of culture onto us and we're accepting it as our own and we're defending it like it's our own when it's all designed to be against us, you know? And it's, it's designed for us to feel like this is normal or a nigga shooting a nigga. It's something that, that is, we should be celebrating, you know? But then at the same time, y'all wonder why we are in the state that we're in because that's the culture that we're in and i know it's bigger than that it does go to the root of everything that we've been through but definitely music is not helping and music is definitely hurting and it has a factor on that and i feel like people they wouldn't go so hard to push that type of music if it didn't have any effect on our mentals or on our psyche on our subconscious mind and from from the 808s and the, the heavy low frequency trap drums you know everything is meant to keep us in a low vibrating state and as consumers we have to we have to control our narrative and what we're allowing ourselves to listen to and what we're allowing to be um called black culture yeah so imagine. yeah listen I, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to to elaborate on that. Um, and I appreciate you using the platform to get that message out, because that's definitely a message that we co-sign. Um, any way that we can support you going forward, please do not hesitate to ask. I'm going to be promoting you, telling everybody that Reese Raps is my new <laughs> favorite artist that's out there up, up and coming. So tell the folks where they can find you, what's up next and anything else you want to share, and then we'll tap out. Thank you so much for having me. Y'all can definitely find me at Reese Raps. That's R-E-E-C-E-E-R-A-P-S on everything, ReeseRaps.com. Google me. You'll find all my music. You'll find other articles and stuff like that. Definitely look me up on any music platform that you listen to. My upcoming EP, I will be selling that on my website. I'm, I'm, I'm over the stream and stuff. You know, they, they robbing us out here, so... I'm definitely going to be selling that outright to to the people that want to hear the music. They can definitely go to my website, ReeseeRats.com, and get that on 214. Um, definitely um, stream or watch the Provide music video I just dropped. Check out the Diary of a Piehead music video. That's where it all started. Um, I do throw events. Um, I have a page called Dope Events, D-O-A-P. And for Diary of a Piehead, that was the original context. But really, I'm, I'm just redefining dope. So definitely check out Dope Events. And yeah, just check me out on Instagram. I'm mainly on Instagram right now. So um, check me out. Send me a message. Let me know what you think about the music. And share my content or share something that you like with a friend, with your platforms. Because that's how we get out. The biggest promotion is word of mouth. So make sure if y'all find a dope artist, not just me. If y'all find a dope artist, definitely tell a friend about them. And put somebody else on them. And and let's get the word out about these artists like myself that are not selling you the music to destroy you. You know, and that's how we're gonna change the culture. That's how we're gonna change the narrative. And that's how we going we gonna win. All right, say less, say less. That's what that's what we say in Philly. Say less. So, <laughs> say less. All right, so I say that a lot of places. Yeah, I appreciate you going off topic with us. Hold on one second. Uh, that was Reese Raps family, um, up and coming artist, super dope. Please go over to her social media, follow, support the content, support the movement. When her album drops on 214, go to the website and purchase it. We have to support. We have to vote with our dollars. We have to engage uh, and get behind the people who are doing the dope shit for the culture. All right. So this has been another episode of Going Off Topic with Brother Omawale. I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.
going off topic. Off topic? You really off topic right now. Yo, you way off topic? How is it that everybody's over here and you way over there off topic?